Ladies and gentlemen, Gay Kim here. Uh, welcome to the daily update. You guys had a good day trading today. Market is down quite a bit. Uh, we have S&P down about 3.5% here. You can see that S&P down 3.5%. NASDAQ is down 5%. Dow down 2.7%. Russell 2000 is down 2.95%. Let's check out the VIX. See where it's at. VIX is up 26%. Silver got hit 3.7% there. Also the Bitcoin it looks like got about 9% drawdown today. But let's stick with the, um, uh, what is that? The S&P here and look at the uh, 65 minute chart. So, um, you know, I've been pretty much tweeting out all throughout the day today uh, since this morning. And um, there are a few things I talked about. Uh, you know, first thing I talked about was that as I was tweeting, and we talked about this before on the weekend or on the daily videos, we're getting into that resistance level here. We also talked about the weekly, and I tweeted out on yesterday, uh, I believe this week, sometime this week, yesterday, I'm pretty sure it was yesterday. And there's this is a weekly chart, obviously. And when I draw this on the weekly chart, and when I drew this yesterday, on this weekly chart so you can see it goes all the way down here so when i drew this drew this yesterday keep in mind this is a weekly chart um you see that long upper wick there so yesterday it what it looked like was it looked like this it was a green bright green candle breaking above this potential resistance level and i talked about Here's a weekly chart. However, the week's not over yet. And today's Thursday, so tomorrow's Friday. We have a one more day before this gets finalized. And it looks like, um, you know, it attempted to break above it. But man, after this kind of move though, you know, we talked about this last couple weeks because we've been tracking this resistance for quite some time, right? We talk, we've been talking about this for quite some time. Last couple of weeks, we've been talking about it, uh, talking about how, you know, uh, we're probably at least at minimum, we're going to slow down at this vicinity. So if the buyers cannot able to bring the price back up, it looks like we're going to close this week uh, below this potential resistance. This resistance looks scary right and you and i also saw people been sharing this um because last time we saw that in 2015 and 16 we did these are two 15 percenter 15 percent here 15 percent there so 2015 and 16 doesn't seem much now because what we see here but trust me people are freaking out and there are certain sectors and certain stocks were getting into a bear market or getting hit pretty hard because we hit we got hit with the 15 percent and then we got hit another 15 percent after then still on 16 and that was this and then remember what happened in late 2007 8 17 there was a 12 percent correction there but subsequently we did see that 20 percent decline afterwards after hitting this resistance and then the covid which is 35 percent correction and then, well, wow, we're back here. You know, this thing is probably going to do maybe another greater decline, right? So we got this decline and then got bigger and then got bigger. And we're going to see another big. Well, I have reasons to believe. I don't have time to explain everything right now today. But I have reasons to believe that we're not going to see a huge decline like that or like this or like that. I think potentially the worst case scenario, we may see a decline like, you know, early 2018, which was 12% decline. And I talked about this uh, on one of the videos, I think over the weekend or something like that, that I'm expecting potentially, um, you know, 7, 10, maybe 12. Worst case scenario, 15. But I think NASDAQ can do 15. So I think... 7 to 10, 7 to 12 on the S&P. That's what I'm looking for from the peak. Um, on the NASDAQ, maybe 10 to 15. 
from the peak. And I think, you know, I'm going to talk more about this on the weekend, but I don't think it's going to be quick, easy pullback. And then where it just V shapes higher. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, we just go back to all time. I actually think we're going to start to grind and a lot of whip sawing action um, this time around. Right. So I'll talk more about that on the weekend video. But for now, let's stick with the 65 minute chart here. So I've been tweeting all day today talking about my midterm moving average. Right. My midterm moving average has not been. Um, you know, retested since late July. Last time it was retested, as you can see, that July 30th, July 29th, July 30th, actually. Ever since then, entire month of August, right? Entire month of August trading, we never once came down and hit that level, the midterm moving average. Because so usually it gets hit it once or twice here, and then we hit it here late July. Um, there are a few times where it got close, but we never did. We got a little close here. We never did. And at the time, there was a gap area which acted as support. For the first time since late July, we are seeing my midterm moving average getting retested. And it is no coincidence, right? You can see that we threw that hammer candle there right on that midterm moving average, right? Not in the middle of it. Not a little bit above it, but just pretty much right on it. We have to understand we are now broken below my short-term moving average, right? You can see that um, my squiggly light blue, we're below the short-term moving average. So let's give benefit of the doubt to the sellers in the short term. Some Someone was asking me throughout the August, why are you always bullish in the short term? Because it's been, the price has told us, right? Because the entire month of August, We've never, we breached my short term moving average twice, and the next day we just got right back above it. So every single time, you know, the short term sentiment was bullish. Now we've gone below it, we just tanked below it, we've, you know, blew right through my short term moving average. It's been acting as support here, a little bit here, and here, and here, and now we're below it. So, um, we're going to pay attention to short-term moving average because we could see the price getting back up here and hit that short-term moving average before potentially falling back for possible double bottom or low. We don't know. But we are seeing price finding support at my midterm moving average, right? And we threw what it looks like a bullish hammer candle there. And if you've been watching me last several months, you know that when I do my um, candlestick analysis, we know that the candlestick doesn't mean anything until we see a follow through. So we see a, this is actually very, very good. Look, that's a textbook bullish hammer. Uh, I say tech, they're, they're, okay, to make it like a good bullish hammer, first you need to see a decline. Nice, um, kind of a drawn out, decline which we saw that all throughout the day that's a drawn out decline and at a right support good location so you can't just have hammer in the middle of nowhere right it it just it, it might it means nothing if it if it just happened location is important so are we in a good location well yeah because we're right on the midterm moving average and near to my support at 341 which is a gap support right in that vicinity but i think more importantly we are right on that midterm moving average there right on the we actually pierced it below it and then gotten right back up here found some buyers there and long lower wick like three times more than the body so that qualifies as a good looking uh hammer you want the can't you want the wick to be uh, longer like three times uh, three times or longer than the body so you can see you can put three of these guys here and it'll be longer right so that's that's a long lower wig and it's also better if the body is green versus red body is green it would have been better if there's no upper wick at all there's a little bit upper wick there so it slightly diminishes its bullishness it would have been better if it was completely shaved completely shaved green body small body long lower wig will be perfect textbook hammer candle but it won't mean anything if tomorrow morning this thing starts seeing some kind of a bearish candle like this it won't mean a thing right if we see something like that 
that candle doesn't mean a thing. If we see a gap down and see something like this, that candle doesn't mean anything. Only way this candle is going to mean anything is if we see a follow through at least for a few hours and never breach below the hammer area, that hammer high today. So if we maybe pull back and then we stay above the hammer and then bounces, then we can say, okay, that hammer definitely is the reversal, right? And obviously we'll know more about it tomorrow uh, regarding that hammer, I'll follow up on that. So obviously we are, my midterm moving average, it's, it's, it's moving sideways, but overall though, right? We have to all agree that my midterm moving average does pretty does have pretty impressive resume, right? Because every time this thing uh, came and hit that mo moving average, we did see market bouncing, right? So we want to get, what does that mean? Doesn't mean it's a 100% guaranteed thing is going to bounce from here, man. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we want to give as of today, as of this moment with the data that is at hand, things can change tomorrow. But for now, we want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the midterm, in a sense that my midterm moving average is still rising, still rising, right? Still rising. There were some of these fast, abrupt sell-offs before. So we want to keep that in mind. Again, tomorrow we'll come back, things can change. We have to reassess the situation, yes. But for now, we did. It was it was red all day long. First hour, second hour, third hour, fourth hour, fifth hour, sixth hour. We saw a little bit of green body there with the long lower wick. So let's see how that plays out going into tomorrow. Should the price continue to lower? We see a gap down or something like that. We do have gap area at 341 and 339. This level should act as pretty decent support if we do see a continuation to the downside tomorrow. At least we're gonna see some kind of short-term bounce here, right? So that's why gap area is good. Buyers deploy that gap because if should the price come back, retest that, that area act as support, right? Keep in mind here, there, there are this gap here, this gap here, this gap here. You know, some of these levels did act as support. So you may find support at 341 and the gap area before moving higher, or it may go down and fill the gap before moving higher. So tomorrow, we'll probably get a better idea, right? But let's look at that oscillator real quick before I let you guys go. So it's been elevated for the entire month of August. And for the first time, we're breaking below this middle level here. It is no longer elevated. And ever since it got elevated, once we identified that this oscillator was elevated, we talked about how uh, adamant this market is going to be, right? I use that analogy as, you know, you're, you know, you're driving a stick shift. First gear, second gear, third gear, and fourth gear, and fifth gear, right? First, second gear, your car is much jerkier. But as you go into third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, it's less jerkier, but the car goes faster, right? First gear, second gear, right? Third gear, it's a bit jerkier, but it's, it's not as jerky as second and first. And then you get into fourth and fifth gear, not even any jerks here. And it goes faster and faster. You see how the vertical move got, you know, more vertical compared to, you know, compared to these moves here, right? So that's what we saw here, first, second, third, fourth, fifth gear. Now we're breaking below it. I'm going to get rid of this line. Um, and we have... You know, bears actually not fully tired yet. If they, if bears wanted to utilize it, they got just a little bit more room to bring it down. Just a little bit more. And that might mean if we do see the market continue lower, you know, filling this gap here. And then after that, this gonna really hit that overbought or oversold level before this thing attempting to attempt to curl back up if we see the uh, gap getting filled or finding support in that vicinity. So anyway, I'll come back for you guys tomorrow night and uh, we'll re-examine the situation. We'll go from there. Enjoy your evening. Good luck trading tomorrow.